the ground fault is a design that Igor Berger came up with when he designed his Tiny. Um, the Tiny was a 15 size airplane. Bob Kruger took the Tiny and blew it up to a 25 size airplane. That's what you see here on the blocks. Interesting, interesting looking plane. The, the uh, fuselage, I've already done the fuselage, it's done. It's not a real large airplane, it's a good 25 size. I fixed it or uh, built it so that I can put a uh, LA-25, OS LA-25 in there. Um, it's a very simple construction. This was actually two pieces a quarter inch uh, that I laminated together. Uh, and then your 1 16th inch plywood doublers on the outside. Of course you have a slot back here for your uh, horizontal stab and your elevators. Um, to go through uh, the elevators uh, are, are uh, not a split type elevator because uh, it's hinged directly to the stab and, and it's an easier construction really. So anyway, that's the uh, that's the fuselage. Now I want to talk about the wing. The wing construction. I love this uh, the way this wing is constructed because it uses a leading and trailing edge, much like the Millennium wings that Tom Morris talks about, and I have built many of. Um, the Mobest, Larry Cunningham designed the Mobest to have the same type of leading and trailing edge and that's where you simply take two pieces of one quarter inch by one half inch balsa and you sandwich a piece of um, one sixteenth by one half in between so you get a T so to speak that's laying on its side and it looks something like that. Well that's exactly what it looks like because that's excess that I trimmed off. And then the ribs have slots in the front and in the back that just slide onto here and that makes a shelf for them and you glue them to that. Your trailing edge is two pieces of one quarter by one quarter with a piece of one sixteenth by one half sandwiched in between it. And we'll try to move it around where you can see it. So, you know, your, your ribs have slots in the front and slots in the back and they just simply slide over this and you glue it and that's what you do for your leading and trailing edges. Um, this one, what you have to do uh, in order to get to round it off some is you take your uh, razor plane and you go down and you take off some balsa top and bottom and then you just sand it to contour to it. It'll be a blunt edge but it'll be a rounded blunt edge. Um, very simple to work on and everything and then to build it these blocks that you see here uh, I actually bought these from Tom Morris and they're half inch plywood you can make them yourself if you want but I was lazy so I called Tom and he made me up a set he sells these things in sets of 8 or 12 I can't remember but anyway they're notched out uh, the, the leading edge is notched out the proper width for these uh, three pieces that go together to make your edge and slides into the notch like that so you have something that looks like that and same thing on the trailing edge only the trailing edge is uh, for two pieces of one quarter by one quarter with a piece of one sixteenth um, by one half put in there and it would pop in the same way but like you said these blocks are available from Tom if you want or you can make them yourself out of half inch plywood uh, you know, I'll put a plug in for Tom here. He also made me some for my ringmasters when I was doing solid leading edges. And he can do things like this where you can, any airplane that has a leading edge that's like that, and a trailing edge that has, you know, the aileron looking piece of balsa back there, like the old ringmasters did. Uh, I've got a whole set of these too that I can build uh, leading, uh, build wings that are, that are uh, customized like that. But, it's a real easy build. You simply slide these blocks onto your leading and trailing edge and then you just line it up. And I, you know, I usually put the number two rib and the number seven rib in and then I just slide the rest of them in. This is angle iron right here that um, I went and purchased from a junkyard or somewhere to keep the blocks from sliding so that when you, you finally get this all lined up before you hit it with the glue, you can push your angle iron in and that creates the pressure. It keeps the wing from moving while you're working on it. You have one large, long piece in the back and then there's actually another piece like this on my building table, which this is not my building table. 
I use a piece here and then I will have another piece that also will go this way. So I've got the blocks captured between the angle iron and the wing is not going to go anywhere. And it allows me to get the ribs in there, slip, sl slide them on and locked in. And this also will be using the uh, uh, suspended bell crank. I've got the uh, one of the plates here. Your ribs, your center ribs are notched an eighth inch deep for the eighth inch plywood. Um, you got one top and bottom. And if you want to see about the suspended bell crank, you can refer to my previous uh, video on that. But that will hold the bell crank in place. Uh, this particular plane has a uh, leading edge sheeting on it, and then you will have a piece of uh, one inch wide, one sixteenth balsa back here for your trailing edge sheeting, and then cap strips. Okay, well designed wing, a strong wing, and a very light wing. And my suggestion, the way I always build these wings, is to have this type of leading and trailing edge that have to be, you know, uh, cut down and then in shape. Um, is I usually I, I, I put the leading edge and trailing edge sheeting on. The last thing I do is take my razor plane and start cutting the, the leading and trailing edges down and then I sand them to shape. So anyway I wanted to show it to you. The, uh, the kits will be going out probably in a week or so for all of you that have ordered them. But this is the uh, this is the wing. I'll hold it up again for the uh, for the ground fault. I'll set it there so you can see that side of it. That's another neat thing. You can take this wing up. These are kind of pressure fit on here. And you can take on and you can flip the wing over or, you know, reverse it or however and, and uh, your jig kind of moves with you. So that's about all I can think of. These are quarter inch by quarter inch spars. Uh, pretty common. So anyway, that is the ground fault. And uh, thank you for the orders on them. Any questions, let me know.